All right, now Daniel chapter 12, verse 11 and 12. And uh, here's the, the prophecy numbers people wonder about. From the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there'll be 1,290 days. Wait, wait, I thought it always says 60. Now we're jumping to 90. That's adding 30 days. Blessed is he, by the way, that was one month in the lunar calendar. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Now we've got three time periods. Marsha, go ahead, put that chart up on the uh, screen for me for our local audience, and you can put the feet out to those that are watching. Three time periods given in this one chapter 1260, 1290, 1335. Traditionally, most Adventist scholars believe you stay with a historic view on this prophecy. You've got the beginning, really of the um, little horn power and the abomination of desolation. Now for the Jews an abomination of desolation was when you brought an idol and idolatry into the house of God. They called it the abomination of the heathen. Whenever they got, Solomon did it when his wives got him to bring idols in. Manasseh did it. They brought idols and they called it the abomination. With the conversion of Clovis who was one of the first barbarian kings and 508, he is the king that was also instrumental in bringing down these three other horns, the Visigoth, the Heruli, the Ostrogoths, that were uh, Arians. They did not believe in the triune God. Uh, they, they believed that Jesus was created. And Clovis, in his conversion, he set up a combination of church and state. Thirty years later, Justinian, the Roman emperor, he went the next step in 538, and he said, I am going to issue an edict making the bishop of Rome the new ruler of the church. No longer with a capital in Jerusalem. Now it's being moved to Rome. That's where the seat of the little horn was. The Bible says that the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority, his throne. And both those dates, one is 1290, one is 1260, they both reached to 1798. That's when the beast receives a deadly wound. That's when the he makes an end of shattering the power of the people of God. And then you've got the 1335. It says, blessed is he that comes to the 1335. Why is he blessed? That's the year of the great Advent awakening when the prophecies of Daniel were opened. The, the message of Miller where he started to give the historic interpretation of these prophecies. Incredible light came on the people. They didn't have everything right. But boy, they had a lot of things right. And, it was, and they were blessed because they're all excited. The second coming is taking place. And so that happened in 1843. Now, in fairness, I should, I should probably say, I, I know there are other views on this subject. And even among our scholars. I've been reading this week, friends, pray, pray for me. <laughs> it, I tell you, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there. Great scholar in our church. He was a vice president, Roy Allen Anderson. Had good books on prophecy. He said, you know, there's some mystery. It could be the typical historic interpretation, but he said uh, it could be that uh, it's talking about Islam because it's 1,335 days from the, from the uh, call of the Hagia of, not the Hagia, the, uh, yeah, of Muhammad until the Ottoman Empire fell. Now, I don't agree with him, but that's one view that was put out for years. Roy Allen Anderson. You've got a lot of the Protestant... Um, People, they say, oh, this is all in the past. It was Antiochus Epiphanes. That doesn't work. He was a Greek Seleucid king who attacked Jerusalem and he brought an abomination to the temple. That doesn't work because the prophecies of Daniel go way beyond the Greek empire. They go beyond pagan Rome. They go beyond papal Rome. So why would it stop there way back with the Greeks? That doesn't make sense. This is the one that I think makes the most sense. There are people who then say, well, maybe this is a time where you are to apply it they're not literal years, or days don't represent years, but they're literal days. And then that means that there's going to be three and a half year time of trouble, and there'll be a Sunday law, and then 30 days after the Sunday law, then the plagues begin, and the plagues last 45 days, and uh, you know what? You'll have to wait and see. I, I don't teach that, because what good will a time prophecy be once probation closes? I mean, how's that going to redeem anybody? The purpose of prophecy is redemptive. It's to save people. And so, I, you know, 
when the time comes, if that happens, it happens. But I think we need to stick with the historic view of these things. The fact is the abomination of desolation, Mary worship, the mass, confessing your sins to a priest, um, believing that hell burns forever, purgatory, limbo, all of these abomin abominations. The truth was cast to the ground. It all came in during this time period with the support of church and state and it lasted for over a millennia. This is the stuff that history looks at. History does not look at a headline one day that disappears. The Bible prophecy, rather, is looking at the big picture. These are big picture events that took place and, and this is what I think he's talking about. Then we've got to get to the last verse here because I, I, I want to finish. I know I went a minute over. Daniel 12, 13. Go your way till the end of the days, till the end, for you will rest and will arise to your inheritance. And the word there, your lot. You remember when Joshua divided up the promised land, it says he cast lots for them in Shiloh. Joshua 18.10, before the Lord, he divided the land to the children of Israel. That's the language that's used. God is telling Daniel, says you are going to get your lot in the promised land. You go rest. What does rest mean? Many of them sleep in the dust of the earth. Daniel, you will sleep. Now, not only does it mean Daniel will be resurrected and he's going to get his eternal inheritance, but it means that in the end of these days, Daniel, his writings come to life. In 1843 and during that time period, there was great light that was shed upon the writings of Daniel. So there's oh, a lot more I could say about this. Hopefully you found something edifying. Thank you so much for studying the Word of God with us, and we look forward to doing this again together next week.